Do you ever wish that you could read your Bible more often, but you just don't have time or energy to do so? Or do you wish that you could be more present as a wife or a mother, but you're just so tired, exhausted, busy, and grouchy all the time? Well, if so, I have exercise today that will help you overcome all of these obstacles. If you are new here, my name is Brittany Ann. I am the owner of equippinggodlywomen.com and author of the book, Fall in Love with God's Word, Practical Strategies for Busy Women. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an optimal energy tracker in order to figure out when is the best time of day for you to do all of the different things that you need to get done in a day. This is a practice and a habit that I have done for a few years now. And let me tell you, it is really useful. When you plan your day in advance and you say, okay, this is the best time of day for me to read my Bible. This is the best time of day for me to run my errands and figure out how all of those pieces look in your life specifically. It can be so helpful because you have the time and energy to do the things that you want to do. Now, of course, there are plenty of ways to get more time and energy in your day, and this isn't a health show, so we're not going into all of those. But for this video, I just want to show you this one simple trick that you can do. Now, in order for you to do this exercise, you will probably want the optimal energy tracker page that I have available on my website. If you are viewing this video on YouTube, just scroll down to the description and you will find the link right there. If you are already in the blog post, then scroll down and you will find the place where you can just enter your email and I will send it straight to you so that you can do your exercise as well. If you prefer not to print off the actual sheet, it is completely fine to do this exercise on a random piece of notebook paper or printer paper that you have lying around. And the only other thing that you will need is three color pencils, red, yellow, and green. So let's hop over to the sheet and let me show you how this works. All right, now that you have your paper in front of you, let's go ahead and walk through how to fill it out together. So you will need three colors right in front of you, whether that is markers, crayons, color pencils, whatever you have, but you will want them in red, yellow, and green. And here is what each of those colors signify. So as we fill out this energy tracker, we are keeping track of what your natural energy levels are throughout the day. So green is going to be used for those times of day when you feel at your best, when you have lots of energy, when you feel great, when you're happy, you're productive, and it is a really good time of day for you where you feel alive. So if somebody needs something from you, this is the time of day when they're going to ask you because you feel good, you can tackle the world, you can you know do all of the things, and you're feeling wonderful. So if you know you're a morning person, okay, then mornings are your green zone. That's when you feel your best. Alternately, if you're a night person, then okay, nights are going to be your green zone. Don't fill it in yet but let's talk about what the colors mean first. Your red zone, that is the time when you are not at your best. This is the time when you are grouchy or irritable, you have very low energy. This is not the time to ask you for anything. This is not the time to get into a conversation. This is when you are not at your best. Life is chaotic, you are stressed out, and you just do not have the energy or mental bandwidth to deal with any of the things. So if you're a morning person, maybe late at night is when that is your red zone. You say, do not talk to me after whatever time at night, I am not at my best. Don't ask me for things then. Or if you are more of a night owl, you may say, do not talk to me in the morning before I have had my coffee. That time is my red time. I am not at my best. That is not the time to ask me for things. And of course, we all have times throughout the day when we're at our best and not at our best. That's nothing to be ashamed of, but we want to figure out what does this look like for you? And then your third option is yellow. So yellow is when you are starting to get a little bit tired. Your energy is starting to drop a little bit. You're maybe not at your best. If someone comes and asks you for something, you would say, okay, fine, I can do that. But you're not going to be chipper and excited and happy about it. You'll do it. Like, sure, fine, I can do that. But you're not at your very best. So yellow is kind of in between. All right, next, if you look at your paper, you will notice a big, tall rectangle with times listed on the left side. Now, we didn't include every single hour of the day because there simply wasn't enough space. If you wake up prior to six in the morning or you stay up later than 12 at night, that's totally fine. You can color right above, below the box. If you need to, totally fine. Alternately, if it's the exact same at four and 5 a.m. as it is at 6 a.m., you can just start wherever the day starts or if you are the same at 12 as you are at one and two, totally fine. You can just say, okay, I end my day on green or yellow or red. 
Now, there are two ways to do this, a thorough way or a quick way. If you want to be very thorough about this and really dive into, okay, what does my day look like? When do I have the most energy? Where are my rough spots? What are my great spots? And really dive in deep. Then I would encourage you to print out this paper and keep it with you over the course of a day. And if your days aren't always the same, maybe over the course of a couple days, you can print out a couple and see, okay, how did my day look on Tuesday? How did my day look on Wednesday? Was it the same as Thursday? And were there any patterns? And you can go through and have it right next to you and say, okay, it is six o'clock. How am I feeling? Okay, it is seven o'clock. How am I feeling? And go through every day. And that will give you the most accurate, um, specific information for how you are feeling each hour of the day. And you can look and you can spot trends. Okay, am I always grouchy at the same time of day? Or am I always grouchy when I'm doing a certain activity? Or do I always feel the best at a specific time of day? And that can be really helpful. However, if you don't want to take multiple days to do this, and you just want to rely on your memory, it may not be quite as accurate because you might think, oh yeah, I was good when you were totally grouchy, um, which is fine. But if you would just like to do this a little bit quicker and easier and just get a broad overview, this is what it looks like. That's fine too, to just do this from memory. So I'm going to right now, not take an entire day and make you wait, but I'm going to, from memory, talk to you a little bit as I fill mine out. This is what my day looks like. This is just very honestly when I'm at my best, when I'm not at my best and kind of how this has worked for me. So let me show you what mine looks like and then you'll have an opportunity to fill yours out as well. All right, here's what this looks like for me. So I don't wake up always at the exact same time of day, but typically somewhere around 5, 6, 6.30. So I am going to start my day right then. Now I am definitely a morning person, but I'm not somebody who just jumps out of bed. I typically take maybe 10 minutes or so to wake up. So I will very often just scroll on my phone for a couple of minutes while I am waking up before I'm ready to go start my day. So I'm going to start my optimal energy tracker right at the top with a very thin yellow line. This is a time that if somebody came to me and they said, Hey, I need this thing. Sure. Fine. You know, I can do that. That's okay. But it's not a time where I am like buzzing around the house, like so productive and happy. It takes me just a minute to wake up. So I'm going to start with a yellow line here. Now, after that, I really am a morning person. I know and I have figured out through lots of trial and error that I get my best, most productive work in the morning. This is the time when I'm getting all the kids out the door to school, so I'm kind of juggling a million things at once. I'm also probably checking my email. I'm thinking through my to-do list of all the things that I need to do, and I just have all the things that I'm trying to cram into the morning to get things off my list as soon as possible. But that works for me because that's a good time of day for me. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color in some green. I know if I need to do something that requires a lot of energy or mental bandwidth, this is my prime time to get things done. So I'm going to color down quite a bit in green. Now you don't have to do this by drawing with a ruler lines and saying, oh, at seven, I'm exactly this. And then suddenly at eight o'clock, I'm exactly this. And this is exactly when it changes. It will definitely vary throughout the day. It's not often that you go from green to suddenly now you're in yellow unless something changed, which can absolutely happen as well. If you are picking up kids and dropping them off or your husband gets home, things like that can happen. But throughout the day, you can also gradually change from one color to the next. So I'm going to start my day off in green. And then I'm kind of gradually going to move into yellow. So in the afternoon, I know I still am feeling pretty good. I work from home by myself. My husband's here too. So our house is pretty quiet. So I don't have kids running around, um, being noisy, all the things in the background. It's pretty quiet. I just sit at my desk and work. I know that I need to have my best work done in the morning. If I'm writing, it's going to be in the morning because that's when I feel the best. But in the afternoon, I am just working on tasks whatever needs to be done that I can still do, but may not require as much brain power as I would need first thing in the morning. So I'm gonna kind of gradually move from green down to into the yellow zone here as I tire out a little bit. Now, one thing that I have noticed in the past when I have done this, like I said earlier, I've done this for a couple of years now and it's really helped me to move around my schedule so that I am doing things when I need to do them. When I first started this practice, around the time when I picked up my children from school, it quickly became a red zone for me. I had spent all day working. I was tired. I was probably hungry or I had eaten a lot of sugar and then I had a sugar rush and then I had a sugar crash and that happened a lot. And then I would go pick up my children from school and they would be bounding with energy because they had been sitting at school all day. So I would pick them up and they would be bouncing off the walls, loud, running around the house, leaving messes. And I found very quickly that 
between three and five was a very kind of chaotic red zone for me. I would get grouchy and irritable very easily and it just wasn't working out. So once I realized this, then I said, okay, I need to make some changes in my life. And we'll talk more about making changes in just a minute, but right now I just want you to know that that is an option that is available for you. So I did make some changes. We'll talk about those in a minute. So now I would say after I pick up my kids from school into the afternoon, that really goes back to a yellow time for me. I'm still kind of tired because I've been working all day, because I've been up since a little bit early, because my kids are children and they can be noisy sometimes and energetic and that's fine. So this today is more of a yellow zone for me because I've made these changes that I need to make, but it absolutely was a red zone before. And then as we get into the evening hours when we're eating dinner as a family, we're probably watching TV, playing Uno, um, going for walks around the neighborhood, whatever we're doing in our lives. Um, This again is a yellow zone for me. I am a morning person. I'm not a night person. So I'm really wearing down at this time of day. I'm getting tired. I'm getting cozy. I'm settling in on the couch um, just to enjoy my family and to be around them. I am not nearly so productive at 7 p.m. as I am at 7 a.m. If you give me a task to do at 7 a.m., I will do all the tasks all at once and we will get them done. But if you give me a task to do at 7 p.m., yeah, that's not as likely to happen. And then once we hit eight and nine o'clock and the kids start going to bed, that quickly turns into a red zone time for me. By this time, I've been up all day. I am tired. I am really ready to wind down. This is not a time to ask me to do things. This is not a time to ask me for conversations. And everybody in my house knows this. This time of night is affectionately referred to as couch o'clock. This is when mom lays on the couch in my coziest blankie that my husband bought for me in my cozy pants and we eat cookies and we have all the comfort things at this time of night because this is not a time when I am at my best in terms of energy. I'm not out doing things. I'm not up cleaning the house. I mean, maybe I'll load the dishwasher a little bit before I go to bed, but I'm not up doing all of the things. I am settling in for the night. I don't have energy. I don't want to have long conversations. I don't want to clean the house. I just want to lay down and do nothing for a little bit to rest and recharge, read a book I love to read before then I eventually go to bed. Now then, let me tell you how this optimal energy tracker has been so helpful for me. So the first time I did this energy tracker, it was after I had given birth to my youngest. Now, when I was pregnant with my youngest, for some reason, I'm not sure why, I was absolutely exhausted. My first two pregnancies were very easy and it wasn't a big deal. But with my last one, I had maybe two good hours in the morning that I could kind of clean up after my toddler and elementary school age kid at the time, um, do whatever I needed to do around the house. And then I pretty much laid on the couch the rest of the day. I was so tired. I had no energy and I needed to make sure that those two hours that I had, I could spend getting things cleaned up so that my husband didn't think I was a total slob. So that's what I did. However, after I gave birth to my youngest and a couple of years after that, my energy levels changed. I wasn't exhausted all day long anymore. I was still tired, but I wasn't exhausted. But I was still in this habit of cleaning for two hours first thing in the morning because again, I still had little kids. And that's just what I did is I would start my day cleaning my whole house. So once I did this optimal energy tracker, I realized, wait a minute, this is my best time of the day. I'm a morning person. I no longer just have two hours of energy. Like this is what my day looks like for the whole day. And I am spending my best time of the day doing something that's not difficult for me to do. I can pretty much clean up the house in a yellow zone. It doesn't have to be in a green zone. I'm no longer limited to just those two hours, but I'm still doing this out of habit. So that was the first change that I had made. I didn't need to spend my best time of day just picking up and sorting toys. I could do that later in the day when I was a little bit more tired and use that time for something that I needed more concentration. And then as I mentioned earlier, in the afternoon used to be the time when I would go into red zone, when I would be just so overwhelmed by all of the things and all of the kids being so noisy in the afternoon after I picked them up from school. So again, I knew I needed to make a change here as well. Previously, I had been running errands first thing in the morning, but I realized 
this isn't errand time. This is a green time. This is when I need to do things that require focus and attention and energy. Errands isn't something that requires a lot of focus or attention from me. I can push that later in the day. So I moved errands to after I picked up my kids from school. Because what I found is that when my kids had tons of energy and I didn't have a lot of energy, it was much more effective to spend that time taking them to the park or taking them to the library or whatever I could do at that season of my life when if I took them to the park, they could run around and get all of their energy out and I could just sit for a minute. Or if I took them to the grocery store, I could walk them around the grocery store and it would tire them out, but it wasn't really that tiring for me. And again, maybe the grocery store is very tiring for you and that's fine, but it's just a matter of figuring out what does this look like for you in your season? So when are your green zones when you have a lot of energy? Okay, what activities do you need to do then? For me in the season of life I'm in right now, writing needs to happen in my green zones. If I need to work on my book, I'm not gonna be doing that at nine o'clock at night. I have to do that first thing in the morning when I am alert and awake around you know 9 a.m., 10 a.m., that's when I need to get my writing done. So in in order for me to do that, that means I can't be doing errands then. I can't be cleaning the house then. So when should I be cleaning the house? Okay, so cleaning the house has to move to a different spot. So you still get the things done that need to get done in a day, but when you move them, and you move the easier tasks to an easier time of day and the harder tasks to a time of day when you have the most energy, then it becomes a lot easier to get done all the things you need to get done in a day because you put the things where you have the energy to do them. So of course, this is just how this has played out in my life a little bit, but it's going to be different for every single person. So take some time, look at your energy tracker. When are you in the green zone? When are you saying, I have a lot of energy right now. This is when I feel great. Okay, what tasks do you need to put there? Is it something that you really have to motivate yourself to do? And so you need to put it in the green zone because that's when you have the motivation to do it. Is it something difficult like exercising that's going to take energy? Is it something like that's when you play with your children because they need a lot of energy and attention? Things that require a lot of energy and attention should go in the areas where you have the time to do them. And then what are the things that you do on a daily basis that aren't very difficult that you don't really have to think about? Okay, how can you move those to a different part of the day when you're slowly waning on energy a little bit? How can you rearrange things? And then finally, look, are there any red zones? Are there any areas of the day where you consistently say, hey, I am always grouchy first thing in the morning, or hey, I am always grouchy in the afternoons. I am always grouchy in the evenings. Like I frequently yell at my kids during this time, or I am just overwhelmed at this time. Okay, if that's the case, what changes can you make? What activities do you need to move out of this time? Or what activities do you need to move into this time? Do you need to take a break right before that happens? You say, okay, 4 p.m. is a rough time for me. Okay, so maybe you say 3.30, that's when I need to recharge. I need to make sure at 3.30 I put the kids in front of a cartoon and I go have a minute to myself and have some peace and quiet. So how can you proactively make changes to say this is a difficult time for me this is when I'm not at my best. Here's how I can rearrange my schedule to kind of overcome that. So now that I have done this, I find it a lot easier to get into a routine. I have my time of day. This is when I do this time of task. And I have my time of day. This is when I do this kind of task. And I have my time of day when I don't do any tasks. And that's okay because I know that, my family knows that, and our life is now structured around that. And obviously, you know, there's going to be some degree of you have other family members and it may not be perfect, but what changes can you make? What things can you do for your schedule? So the things that you need to do get done when you are best able to do them. So go ahead, fill out your own habit tracker, figure out what does this look like for you? What changes do you need to make? All right, so hopefully you found this exercise very helpful and eye-opening. If you do do this exercise at home, please leave me a comment below and let me know what you found out. Did you find that there was a time of day where you're particularly alert and awake? If so, when is your best time of the day? Did you find that there are times of the day when you go into the red zone where it's difficult to be kind or energetic or to do the things that you need to do? If so, when are your most difficult times of the day? Again, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We all have times of the day where we're more alert or less alert, times when we're at our best and times and we are not at our best. But as long as we can know and understand when that is, then we can plan our days accordingly so that we have the time and energy we need to read our Bible, to be that wife, to be that mom that we want to be. And then we also say, hey, this is my time to rest. And we have that time too. So hopefully you found this helpful. If so, leave me a comment below and I would love to hear what you found out from your exercise.